Hello, I'm Sarah Casey and I'm an artisan researcher at Lancaster University and I'm going to talk to you about a project that I'm doing with my colleagues Rebecca Ellis and Costas Dimopoulos and this is a project called Thresholds of Imperceptibility, Dark Matters. And this is a project about where cosmology, anthropology and art might overlap in their interrogation of what it means to deal with the imperceptible. One of the ways that I've been looking at the imperceptible in this project is by looking at this very idea of the threshold as the boundary between one space and another and what it means to encounter this threshold, what it feels like and what it might mean. As an artist, my practice is through drawing. And in drawing, one way that we might consider this threshold is in terms of the surface or in terms of the page. For instance, drawing is both an image on a page, but it's also an object, something which you can hold up, which you can move around, and which you can enter a relationship with. For instance, the critic Michael Ginsburg has talked about drawing in terms of saying, hold the page up to right angles and consider it on its fine side. See it in its, all its insubstantiality. So drawing is nothing more than a fine edge it's an immaterial space. So what does it feel like to enter that space of drawing, this limbo between one side and another? And that's a question that I've been asking in some of these drawings. One thing I'm particularly interested in, in terms of surface, is what happens when we encounter it as a viewer? What happens when we go up to that edge or that threshold? Is it a limit or what might be beyond it? So the first lot of drawings I'm going to look at are called withdrawn objects. These are drawings made on indigo paper, a surface which is deep, dense and dark. As we look at it, we can't see into it, we can barely even see what's on it. So the drawings are made with a blue ink on blue paper, quite fortuitously when working in this counterintuitive way, the blue ink dries to a dark red hue, which as you walk past it reflects and shimmers and is only revealed as the light catches it. And you can see that in some of the spaces here. In the drawings which are emerging, coupled with these, is a process of burning onto the paper from the reverse using a soldering iron, carefully mapping out and measuring the shapes of objects from behind. So what we get when we come up close to them is a sense that there's something underneath it pushing through. And in this sense, the surface is very much a kind of boundary or a limit, but it gives us a sense that there's something beyond there or something within it that we can't quite get to. This series of withdrawn objects have been made working from this object here, which is a net-like object. And it's actually a cage. It's a cage full of sandflies studied in tropical medicine. So what provoked me in terms of thinking about thresholds and surface was here was something called a cage, something which is usually um, an enclosure, something which is rigid. But in this sense, it's a material object. It's elusive and it's mutable. I can move it around. Its boundaries aren't fixed and its shape is indeterminate. So in this way, it became a useful metaphor to think around these ideas of these edges of um, the cosmos, which are mutable, a kind of fuzzy edge where we're not quite sure what lies beyond or where the boundary might be. Another group of works I've been making go under the kind of working title Echo. And what these are are double skinned drawings with silver ink on mylar, a type of drafting film, which is a transparent um, drawing film. The idea behind the works is the idea that much of the information that we deal with when we understand the universe is reflected back to us from far distant places. And all we see is the reflection, the data, rather than the thing itself. If you like, it's an echo of what's there. It's similar in many ways to processes which we use on Earth, for instance, within medicine, for instance, ultrasound, used to both see within the body and also to study the deep oceans as well, that 
sound is sent out and then it brings back in information in the form of a map to the researchers that are studying it. So in this sense, the drawing is reflective, it's silver. As we move across it, it flickers in and out of view. It's not stable. It can't be captured in one glance. At sometimes one image is visible, at sometimes another is visible. And there are two images making up the whole. The upper image and its mirror behind, interacting, relating to each other. A kind of shadow again which is out of grasp. My intention for the work is that, as a viewer might approach it in the gallery, as they approach the work, it will shift. And what they see from a distance as they approach it will change as the silver ink reflects the light and moves and flickers. So if you like, the actual revelation of the image itself is contingent upon the viewer and their position in relation to, work, to the work. So as we move, the drawing shifts with us. So in a way, the works are a, are a reflection on the idea of surface as something, again, which is mutable and contingent, but also pushing at what might be beyond it. And also the fact that is a limit an absolute limit? Is there something beyond it? Or is the limit a point at which we are bounced back to reflect upon ourselves? The surface is a point of reflection, a point of touch, a point of contact or a point of engagement. This group of works, the messengers, are images of the Neolithic carved stone walls. Archaeological objects which are very much materially present, but nonetheless their meanings remain elusive. And these interest me because these might be called an example of a dark object, something which remains hidden, out of touch, out of our reach and kind of unknown. Unlike the other works that I've talked about in relation to surface, these works have no surface. This isn't an object, drawing as an object, something we can pick up and turn over and walk around and examine. Instead, what we see looking at the work is not the image itself, but its shadow or reflection. And this work arrived out of an inquiry kind of into and our discussions about what it was that we were actually looking at when we think about the deep universe. What is it that we see? Is it stuff or is it data? Is something observed or is it inferred? So for this series of work, what I've done is I've etched onto glass. So the drawing in itself is insubstantial, insignificant, barely visible. And when it's exhibited, what's seen in the image is something much stronger, much clearer, more resolved than the drawing itself. In actual fact, in this particular setup, we can't see the drawing. The light shining from behind it is so bright that it dazzles us and we actually become unable to see the thing itself. And so we need to look around it to its shadow in order to see what's there. And I call this work The Messengers, the idea of something sending or carrying information back to us. This group of works, working title is at the moment Nets, takes a very different approach to surface to the silver works, Echo. In Echo, the silver light hits the page and is reflected back. Um, as I said, thinking about ideas of, for instance, cosmic microwave background, which is detected in the atmosphere, and then a signal is detected and sent back to Earth by probes. Nets approach the surface not as a boundary or a limit or a point of contact at which we are reflected back, but as something which is potentially porous, 
we're teased by holes which pierce and puncture through from the other side. We can't see through clearly, but we get the sense of fragments and traces and small particles of what's beyond. And the drawings hang in space and they look different from each side. But like the silver work, as we move past them, the image that we see changes with our movement as we see the holes from different angles. And the light shines through, reflecting different parts of what's behind, or rather revealing a different aspect of what's behind the image.